Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Industry of Impact. Are you asking the right questions? Am I getting technical knowledge and expertise? I am with AMI. Am I getting the right solution for my company? I am with AMI. Am I getting a trusted partner? I am with AMI. So, who are you with? I am with AMI. I am with AMI. I am with AMI. Are you? Go to automatedmarketing.com. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Industry of Impact. Uh, I lost your video. There we go. There we go. Um, you know, Industry of Impact is a LinkedIn live series and podcast. Um, that really shines a light on people who are making a positive impact on uh, mm. companies, on people, on communities. And, um, you know, in any industry across the board, from industrial to tech, food and bev, consumer goods, you name it, there are people out there that are doing good and helping others. And this is a platform for us to talk to them and get to know them. And really, like I said, shine a light on them. There's a uh, a quote that I like to say now um, each time by Carl Sagan that says, who are we if not measured by our impact on others? That's it. Who are we if not measured by our impact on others? And I think that kind of sums this up um, uh, in a really in a really concise way. Um, our hope is that uh, watching this, you will um, connect directly with our guest. Uh, we hope that you will follow them, uh, and in this case, follow our guest today. Um, but then also you'll walk away with some inspiration, ideas, actionable steps, and uh, something that will just hopefully enhance your business and your life. Um, so that being said, my name is Mark Berger. I am uh, the VP of Marketing for AMI. My co-host today is Bill Allen. He is the VP of Sales and Service for AMI. And our guest, the star of the hour or part of the hour, um, is uh, none other than someone who is a founder, a CEO, a producer, an advocate, really just all around rock star is how we'll describe her. Um, she's well known for USA Loves Manufacturing, uh, which has a really big following. Uh, I think over 65,000 followers on LinkedIn. Um, Gretchen Filia. Welcome, Gretchen. Guys, how are you? Doing really Fantastic. well. We're very uh, excited that you're here. I thought you were going to wear the Santa hat. I was I ready. Have, for it. I have it ready for later. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like the surprise, the the ending. You just messed up the surprise. Oh no, <laughs> I blew it. Joking. Uh, awesome. So, are you're are you you're in Atlanta area, Georgia? Is that right? I am. Yes, awesome. north of Atlanta. Is that where you're from originally? Um, yeah, I'm originally from Georgia. I was here um, pretty much until I moved to New York City briefly. And then I moved out to LA and San Diego and Aspen, Colorado, really briefly. Yeah. And then I made my way back. Sorry. Okay. I'm having issues with my um, phone actually trying to not going kicking off. So sorry about that. Yeah. But yeah, and um, made my way back to Georgia and have been here for quite a while. So love the state. You know, you, you get kind of all the seasons, so it's really nice to be here. Yeah, I almost moved to Atlanta once. It was very uh, close. Yeah, um, I, I lived in Peachtree City, if you know oh, where that is. Yeah, a little bit 
south yep. of us. But yeah, yep. it's a um, pretty wide area. You know, it's like LA. There's a lot to the city because there's such a big circle around. And that yeah, uh, it's a lot of sprawl yeah. coming exactly. off Atlanta, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think an interesting place to start is kind of what sparked your interest in when. Um, when you were growing up, like when did you, when did you kind of come across this idea that you were inspired by robotics, technology, uh, manufacturing? When did that kick in and how did that kick in? You know, that's kind of an interesting story, I guess. Um, I really, when I was growing up, I was an avid reader. I was very much leaning toward, um, you know, literature and I guess the, the cultural art, liberal arts. But mm -hmm. when I went to college at UGA, you know, UGA, <laughs> uh, yeah, go Bulldogs. I, um, I started, of course, core classes. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And I ended up in um, the Terry College of Business. So I received a BBA in marketing. But um, I, you know, I enjoyed all of the business classes. I really, you know, love the idea of entrepreneurship. And those are my favorite classes in the marketing core, I guess, personal selling, et cetera. So that's kind of, you know, where I was for quite a while. And, you know, I always did well in science, didn't really like math, but, you know, did pretty good in that as well. So I always say, you know, I love the term Da Vinci, um, Da Vinci Redux, and I um, talk about Renaissance men and women, people that, you know, have kind of like the arts piece of it, and a lot of the technology, science, etc. it really does kind of meld, and it's a symbiotic relationship, so I guess you could say I'm a little bit of everything, I, I don't really focus on um, one particular thing, so going into manufacturing and technology, it was kind of a, um, it was a, easy thing to do in the end. And then I found out how much I really enjoyed it, but there's such a creative process to it as well. Love it. Yeah. Amazing. But yeah, my family was always, you know, we were always very much obviously pro-American. We really, um, way back when it was easier, but we really always did try to look for the made in the USA tag. My father was a big proponent of it. Um, my mother, English teacher, she, um, you know, she always was kind of always looking at the ethical way of doing most everything, amazing woman. So um, they, they saw the quality and, you know, how it really was what we should do as Americans. So they really um, inspired me in that respect. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so... Tell us about USA Loves Manufacturing a little bit. Like, what, to you, what is it? And when did that effort kind of kick in? Um, and kind of what's your mission with it? You know, it was such an organic thing. I, I really didn't have a big plan when I came up with the idea. I had been in cellular forever, and um, I had my own agency. I, was a, I came from the Nextel, the old 2A background mm -hmm. um started my own agency with a business partner and we did that for quite a while we were purchased next i was purchased by sprint so um, we had a few stores and that's really the way sprint we were very used to b2b like working with government business but sprint wanted us to all have you know 20 stores before it was all over and that wasn't really the business path that we were looking for so um you know he stepped out and I, I continued it. I started a reverse logistics company where I recycled cell phones before the big guys came in and realized there's a lot of money in it. So they started doing it. And I was like the little hardware store when Walmart came to town. But that was great because I had been in cellular for a while and I was somewhat burned out. So I started looking and there was a company that did industrial repair and um, equipment, they were a really small company. Um, and I thought, you know, why not? Sometimes it's fun just to try something new. But I found out really quickly as I went around and saw a lot of the manufacturing companies, I loved the idea of the people, met so many interesting people. The technology was changing so much with 4.0 and I just fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. But what I found was nobody's talking about it. I didn't see that there was a lot of celebration of what to me was 
the beginning of it all, the nascency of America, you know, the industrial revolution. That's why we are who we are today. And um, I, it was a weekend. I just decided, you know, I wanted to do something more. And I came up with the idea. And that was about three and a half years ago. And, um, you know, I thought, well, I want to do some sort of vlog or podcast, you know, going out and seeing companies and doing videos. Well, it took a while to really put that together, but um, that was my initial thought. But it really grew because there were people that wanted to be involved with sponsorships and memberships. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a very organic thing, but, um, you know, it's really grown I'm actually on a mission this month on LinkedIn. So anyone that is listening, I think I'm at about 8,000. I can't remember the number now, but I'd like to get over 10,000 before the end of 2022 for USA Loves Manufacturing because I believe we just really need to focus on getting the word out about how important manufacturing is for America. You said 10,000, are you you're saying followers, dollars? What is that? Numbers. Yes, um, I have, I think it's 8,000 something on USA Loves Manufacturing, the company uh, page. Now my mm -hmm. personal, um, I don't know how many I have at this point. 65 but, plus, um, I love it. <laughs> but um, yeah, USA Loves Manufacturing is the page, it's the company page. So okay. anybody out there, if they would follow um, USA Loves Manufacturing and American Made, which is another one. Um, for the TV show, I am, um, you know, I really want to start putting more and more out there to highlight companies and individuals that are making it happen for America. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a micro, you know, dirty jobs kind of thing, right? And you know what? It is somewhat um, because in, again, I guess the organic way that it started and, you know, me going out and going into these facilities, but what actually... And that's part of the um, perception that I want to change, you know. Yes, it is. Manufacturing has that quality sometimes. But a lot of the manufacturing facilities, they're like microcosms. Um, you know, it's just you go into a huge facility and it's like a, a small little village or, you know, town. It's almost like... Sure. A good part of these dystopian movies. Um, you can do everything and anything in these facilities. And then you mm -hmm. have the facilities that have tons of robotics. I learn something new every single time I go into a manufacturing or technology plant or facility. So it's a very interesting path for people to take. So do you have a do you have a a story maybe of a facility that you went into that kind of shocked you in some kind of way what you saw um i actually have one and I'll, I'll share mine if if you have one you know there's so many that you know there are of course like the bucket list visits that you're just like wow i can't believe i'm able to be in here that's like you know um spacex was just unbelievable Hyundai, um kia kia was you know a facility it's actually down near Peachtree city and that was one of those that, and Hyundai in Alabama, where you go in and it's like a small city because you can do your banking, you can do, you can go to the doctor, they have doctor's offices, they have better food and cafeterias sometimes than you can get anywhere. And of course, all the different divisions, you know, people think manufacturing, they think people that are working out on the lines. Well, those are my heroes, actually, they're the ones that we should be celebrating but right. um, there's also, you know, of course, engineering, the amazing intellect there. Um, but there's marketing. There's, you know, HR. There's so many options in places. And it's a fantastic working environment that you get paid and you can go home at the end of the day and know you're making a difference. So, um, you know, that's why I think it's, again, about perception and getting the word out. Yep. Well, I'll, I'll share. I'll share my amazing story because I, I used to have um, a bit of a love for chocolate. I don't anymore. As I got <laughs> older, I was like, not allowed to eat that, right? Um, but uh, I went into uh, HB Reese up in Pennsylvania, and the the difference between what you well, you know what what you get, and I'm actually looking at a, a sample of uh, HB Reese <laughs> right now, but um, but but those what you get when it comes in the package in the store. Mm -hmm. it's great. I love them, but it's so different than what's on the line. 
And, you know, we, as we were installing equipment there, was able to go out and literally just pick one off the line. Mm. And it's unbelievable. Same, same with uh, bread factories. Oh, right. The, it's so incredible as you're standing there, you're just, and then they're in this smell every day, all day, right? <laughs> Everybody who works there. So they're completely unfazed by it. But all, all the technicians, and at the time I was a, a manager, a techni technical manager, we would go in and we'd just be like drooling, like, oh my God, this place <laughs> smells so incredible. And it's amazing to see all these people standing around and they're just like, yeah, we're, we smell they're it They're desensitized. Day. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's actually one here and I'm north of where I live, it's King's Hawaiian, which everyone knows. Oh, and I've been in yeah. that facility a few times. And like you said, you can get, you know, the bread right off the line. Oh, and just, that that's got, Gretchen, that's gotta be the best ever. Cause that's <laughs> the best bread, like yeah. it, it's so good. Oh, it's, yeah. And it's amazing to see those facilities. Of course, they're absolutely beyond clean. And, oh, yeah. you know, they, the fact that you're trying to grab one off the line or whatever, and I'm like, almost, oh, should I? But they, all, you know, they have places where you can do that. But the taste is just unbelievable. But I will say that King's Hawaiian does a pretty good job of, you know, not only when you first get it, but in their packaging. And, you know, everybody loves King's Hawaiian. And it does taste as incredible good after being mm. on the grocery shelf. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was the name of the chocolate company again? Because I, you know, you so, got to get me in there. <laughs> so that, so that's the, that's the Hershey company, but oh, it's uh, okay. it's one of the hear. specific yeah. facilities is HB Reese, and okay. that's where they're where they're making the peanut butter cups. Yeah. Right. Well, okay, you got to hook me up. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know what? It, it's an amazing facility. Um, if if you've not seen, you know, all the pickers and everything, where they're <laughs> literally picking out uh, which ones look right and which ones don't look right, and I, it's an amazing facility. They've done an incredible job with it. Oh, but yeah. the smell is really the magic. I mean, as soon as you drive into that town, I mean, you can smell it in the air. And you're like, I just want to move here. So I'm smelling yeah. chocolate every day, right? Uh, yeah, there's, uh, I think, I can't remember the city. I think it's Cookville, Tennessee. Um, m, m Mars is there. Same thing. You just drive into the city and you start smelling the chocolate. And, you know, you go, I haven't been in the facility. I've been just outside of it. And yep. I would stay there all afternoon just to smell the chocolate. It's amazing. <laughs> That's hilarious. It is. Yep. Uh, so I'm curious. I, I think you said this, and I think I saw it on the USA Loves Manufacturing website. You do have sponsors. Mm -hmm. Is that something you actively are wanting to get? Like if companies want to get involved with USA Loves Manufacturing, sure, they can follow the LinkedIn page and, and do mm -hmm. all that. Are there other ways for companies to get involved? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's not something that I've done a, a big marketing campaign for. It's usually people that come to me and are interested in, you know, being involved. But on we do have a website, usalovesmanufacturing.com. Mm -hmm. And you can join. Yes, I would love to have, you know, more sponsors, more members. We are in the process of revamping a little bit. So we're going to be going it's a, more regionally next year. We're going to have meetups. So I would love for people to go take a look at it and join as a member. It's $100 to be a member. And right now when you join, I'm also going to be doing a highlight of as many people as possible on LinkedIn. So they'll be able to get the information out about their business. Same with sponsorship. You know, we've got some amazing sponsors Merrill Lynch, Iris, we've got Mile Marker who just started and um, Source Day is an amazing sponsor. So really proud of, you know, what we're doing with um, our sponsors. And um, I think if you look back at some of the stuff I'm doing, I'll explain what, you know, how they're contributing to manufacturing and technology. So yeah, we'd love for people to look and be involved in any way. We're going to be doing more and more videos and um, it's, it's an exciting time. That's great. So if I, if I have, like, if I have friends who are in, you know, manufacturing things in the United States, um, you know, particularly like in the industrial sector, um, are those places that you would like to go and visit and I can kind of just turn them over to you? Sure. Of course. Because, yep. um, you know, not only do I do the, um, founder of USA loves manufacturing, but I also have a company where we do industrial repair and robotic automation. So we can do robotic automation projects, which of course, you know, that's really um, exponentially growing. It's amazing the difference in 
before COVID and after COVID, a lot of companies are adopting these technologies now. And, you know, the ROI is much better. I mean, some of the collaborative lines, collaborative robot lines, you can see ROI after a year and a half to two years. And um, yeah. it makes a difference. Unfortunately, I have some bad stories about that too, but I, right. I won't tell them on here. I'll tell you in private. But uh, yeah, yeah. We're just, you know, facilities with 3,500 employees now down to, you know, 35 to 50. And, and all those things are, have gone quiet. You know, the gyms are collecting dust and there's nobody in the cafeteria. And that, that's kind of a sad thing to see when you, you know, go, you've been going to a facility for 10 or 15 years and there was 3,500 people there and, and now there's 50. I mean, right. That, and are you tough. saying that's because of automation, the robotics oh, com implementation, or completely. just because they're shutting down? No, completely automation. Oh, like, yeah. Everything is completely automated now, and there's just no people. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing. There, there are those plants and facilities yep. where you're going to see that. But we are not in a situation, um, you know, and this is very important to, you know, let people know, the layperson or whomever, that. Robotics, they're not going to take jobs. They're not going to replace people. I understand, you know, certain situations mm -hmm. like that, but it really actually creates more jobs. If you think about it, and this is a whole other conversation that we could do a whole episode, but sure. the reshoring initiative. Um, when you look at the amount of manufacturing that we have here in the U.S., yes, I mean, some have shut down, you know, some are completely automating. Well, why wouldn't we? Because if that means America can become more and more streamlined and eventually bring more back, if we bring more of our manufacturing back, it's going to help with our nationwide security, which we absolutely need to do. Why would you ever send medicine or medical equipment or anything that is crucial? Why would you send that to any country actually, but why would you send that to a country that does not have your best interest at heart? And I'm, you know, again, I'm not trying to make it a political conversation. Yeah. I look at it from a positive point, but there are pieces of what we see. We've got to bring a large of that, a large amount of that back. Absolutely. And that creates jobs. So yeah, we and, the, and it, it also, it also creates an ecosystem around it. So all the jobs that are created by that manufacturing coming back fill up where it left earlier, right? Once it comes back, then you build that ecosystem around it. So I, I, think, um, I think automation and technology, um, it, it, it can't be stopped because it's more efficient and it's coming. Right. And, and, and it needs to come here rather than go someplace else, yeah. right? Yeah. Very much so. I, I believe, you know, and I, I spout these numbers a good bit, but okay, less than 3% of our textiles or clothing is made here in the US, less than 3%. And that, that's just insane. And we can do, we can bring these companies back. They can be um, streamlined in a way like companies like a source day. That's one of the sponsors or people that help with that supply chain and creating a more sustainable company. We can yeah. lower the cost. People think that, you know, it's so much to bring it here and then the cost of clothing will go up, et cetera. But I mean, how many pieces of clothing do you have? And how many pieces of clothes? Me, not many. <laughs> but you probably have a lot more than I do, Gretchen. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I'm not much of a shopper. I, you know, I wear black all the time. But uh, it's such a happy Me color. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But you know, I wear a lot of black, and I don't, I don't buy a lot of clothing because I believe that, um, you know, we all, and I still have too many pieces. But would you rather buy a shirt for ten dollars? And you think about all the aspects of what that ten dollars has behind it when you know you're buying it from another country that maybe they're not thinking about environment, they're not thinking in a sustainable way or responsible for their workers. Would you rather buy the ten dollar shirt that you know has that behind it, or would you rather maybe buy a thirty forty dollar shirt that's going to last three times as long that is a responsible way of producing 
and has not only America at its heart, you know, why it's doing it, but really we're stewards for the world. And if we aren't, and if we don't, you know, do this first, who do we go to? Who, who can we depend on if, we're, if we end up falling? So that's, that's why we need to bring everything back and, and create these companies that are more responsible to the world. So the, your company that you mentioned is it's called Magenta Technologies, mm-hmm. right? Okay, good, good, good. And and uh, and people can see that uh, and get to that from like from your LinkedIn profile as well. Yes, um, actually, my website is being revamped, and it's I believe tomorrow actually is when it's um, I'm relaunching. You know, getting it all detailed out so people can see. I've added on some more pieces to it. Um, you know, not everything is repair or even, you know, my robotics projects. We also bring in other technologies and I'm trying to, you know, again, like drone technology, there's a lot to um, how it supports manufacturing and technology. So I'm always thinking of what can I do next? How can I bring it in? And of course, have it contribute to the whole piece of what I'm doing. You can't bring on too much. And That's something I really had to learn, and I'm sure everybody has had to do that. But um, if I'm out there and I've been a flake, you know, to you in the past few years, you know, sorry. But, you know, you really do have to realize that you've got to hone in on what you can do and do really well. And you can't just keep bringing everything on because then you aren't able to do any of it as well as you should. So, um, uh, but you'll be able to see on there um, all of the different services and I'm going to be doing more. I don't usually promote my business, but I'm going to start doing that more on LinkedIn and, you know, because it provides a value, I I believe. And you're naturally promoting your business, you know, through, through your advocacy, Mm -hmm. uh, USA Lowe's Manufacturing. And the next topic I would like to hear you talk about is your TV stream, uh, the show, what's the show called? American Made? Fabric of America. Fabric of America. Okay. Yeah. You can follow um, on LinkedIn. I have it as American Made because it's um, different projects. But this particular show is called Fabric of America. Right. And it should be, it was supposed to premiere in November, but we were in final edit and had a couple of things we had to do. So it is launching here in December. It is on the Your Home TV Network. And um, Kathy Ireland, if every, I'm sure everyone knows Kathy Ireland, stunning and um, brilliant woman. She has made herself into this business magnet and um, she is the chief strategist of this network. So I'm very excited and proud to be um, under this umbrella. And they've got um, a lot of different shows. So you can go to yourhometv.com and you can look at what they have to offer, but my show, Fabric of America, is going to be on there. That's exciting. Thank Very you. Exciting. Oh, we'll see. That's great. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. But it was. I was going to say, Gretchen, I actually know you better than I do Kathy Ireland. She, cause she was <laughs> like, when I, you know, when I was a kid, she was really popular, and then, and but Gretchen's like the LinkedIn rock star. I mean, no, I, I know you much better than I know her. Well, so, she's, you should do very well. She is amazing, um, you know, what she's doing for this project. And I, you know, she is just hugely successful and what all of the ventures that she has um, done since her modeling days. And I just really look up to her and, um, you know, very, very excited about this project. I was initially doing it with another smaller network that I just did not feel comfortable aligning with in the end and um, took a couple of steps back and then they approached me in the summer. So I feel very, very blessed to be with this group and just super excited about it. Great. Amazing. Well, I look forward to watching it. Thank so. you. Well, no doubt. we'll see. Now, I, I've seen a couple of videos of yours of you shooting right bill is the gun expert i'm not the gun expert here oh okay awesome. you're like you've got a do you have any certain kind that you enjoyed the most and uh, <laughs> careful some, you're stepping saw, on the third rail mark i saw some <laughs> kickback on one of them really kicking that shoulder back yeah, a little yeah. bit yeah <laughs> well i've been very very fortunate again you know just in the situation that i'm um, be able to visit a lot of different companies and you know people that have approached me in the past and Um, So I've been able to go out on a lot of shooting ranges and um, WMD guns. Actually, they're 
such good friends now. Um, I love them to death. Um, I've been able to do quite a few shooting episodes. We've done some full auto and um, love their product. They have a different um, technology. Speaking of technology, um, it's a coating that is almost impermeable. You um, And a lot of people don't know about it, but it's part of, there's WMD guns and there's performance coated products. Mike Vetter, he's on LinkedIn. Um, you know, he could certainly tell you more about it, but it, you could put one of the guns into the sand, you know, from somewhere over in the Middle East for three years and then um, pull it back out and it's gonna shoot immediately. Um, not only does that coating work for guns, but also many, many different things in industry from aerospace to, um, I, you know, I ask him even about spindles and um, the mm. hydraulic cylinders because chroming yeah. is such a pollutant, but so many different aspects. And then um, Lion Arms is another smaller manufacturer. But I've visited quite a few and always uh, I'm excited. Of course, I like Glock and Daniel Defense. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much. I actually have a friend. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'd say I have a friend who lives in the neighborhood who runs a small arms manufacturing company here in Houston. And uh, he's invited me to come look at the place. And I, I just we haven't got around to, you know, setting it up to make it happen. But uh, there's another option if you're if you're ever in Houston. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be out um, in Houston probably in February. So we'll definitely have to do that. Um, okay. I, always, I, love, yeah. I like to shoot skeet, too. That's one of my favorites. The, the other the other opportunity is up in Dallas. So not okay. too far away, you know, three hours. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm actually supposed to go to both of those when I come out to Texas. So we'll we'll definitely have to do that one. Good. One yeah. Excellent. But yeah, <laughs> love shooting. It's always fun. But, you know, I have a lot of different I like to do just pretty much anything. I like to learn new. I'm not good, really good at anything, but I can do a lot of things, if that makes sense, because I'm very curious. So and that's OK. You know, I never okay. said I was going to be a pro at anything. <laughs> so Awesome. Good. OK, well, we, we like to leave these um, these industry of impacts with the hardest hitting question of all. Oh, did she leave? <laughs> I wonder, oh, she dropped us. I think it might have been an accident. An ironic timing that I was saying, leave these. Yeah, it was pro it's, a, it's probably an accident. Yeah, I yeah, wonder yeah. if she'll we'll, come back in. We'll see if she jumps back in here. Because if if she can't answer pineapple and pizza, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. I'm just I mean, it's the reason we're doing this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have had some passionate responses mm. people look back yes especially uh miss michaels yes she was <laughs> at least very, michaels very, very was serious definitely the most passionate about pineapple and pizza yeah Jesus, you, yeah there's something wrong with you if you're doing that <laughs> i like that. oh that was beautiful I, like I think she actually thought you were saying we were done that was like, a quick departure so we didn't even say goodbye yeah. i don't know i think it was more of a yeah i think she just fell an issue tech tech fall off if you will well let's just hang out a second entertain the people sure. <laughs> very good very Stop. good yeah I'm, I'm hoping uh we could get into a uh one of these manufacturers down here um seem, seems like a good fit for her and i would think um companies would love having her in it's like a free marketing thing right i mean you're Get yeah. someone to come in and really highlight your company, um, and having her there as kind of a a host, uh, it's it's free marketing. Like I would, I yeah, I, maybe even get on the maybe get on her her TV show. I I haven't seen that yet, so when it comes out, I'd be interested in yeah. uh, checking out definitely. Yeah, she said this month. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to check it out. Um, but it's funny because we've talked about this. She said she doesn't really market her, you know, magenta technology very much. Mm. But like I said to her, really, I mean, everything she does uh, through U.S. sales manufacturing, through um, the TV show, by marketing herself, uh, she is the founder and pr or president of Magenta. It's she's automatically marketing her company. It's it's inherently built in by building that personal brand. Sure. 
Uh, and yeah, it's, it's extremely kind of smart. Cake, if you will. Well, and we've, I think we've talked to a lot of people on here that mm -hmm. fall into that category. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, last week, um, Jake, uh, Jacob Hall, he, he's a prime example, right? He works for a company and he has a personal brand. And there's no, there's no way that the personal brand doesn't help you uh, in your company. It just automatically, sure. it automatically does. If you're, if you're good at branding yourself, then you're, then you're good at branding and, and working on your business. Yeah, completely agree. This is absolutely uh, 100% spot on. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing she's got a major. She's not company. coming back. She left us. She goes, <laughs> I said, we like to end these things. And she went, boom, I'm out of here. Very efficient with her time. <laughs> yeah, apparently. All right. Well, we'll have to, I'll have to ask her in an email. And uh, when I post this episode on the website and on YouTube, I will post the answer to pineapple on pizza in text, in writing, so that people aren't left like wondering, oh my wondering, God, yeah. never, never got the answer. Um, cause I know that, like I said, it's the most important one here. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you. And we'll thank, thank you. To, thank you to Gretchen. And, uh, and we will have this, um, archived and posted for everybody to, uh, to watch. Have a good Sounds day. Good.